Çok zarif iki tasarımcı hanımefendiyi sahneye davet edeceğim. Sayın Pınar Demirdağ ve Sayın Viola Renate bizlere Future Human Habitat'ı anlatacaklar. Merhaba herkese. Ben Pınar ve Viola'nın Pınar'ıyım. Duyduğunuz gibi Türk olan benim. Fakat Hollandalı iş ortağımla yaptığımız iş ve oluşturduğumuz, konuştuğumuz dilin İngilizce olması nedeniyle önümüzdeki konuşmayı İngilizce yapacağız. Sizden de izin alarak. Teşekkür ederim anlayışınız için. Viola. Merhaba. Nasılsın? Teşekkürler Pınar. That is the only Turkish that I speak. So I will continue in English. So we are Pinar and Viola, and together we form a visual artist and trend forecasting duo, and we're based in Paris. Here you see a very speedy uh, impression of the works we make. We make highly aesthetical visual surfaces that are critical reflections of the world around us. We work for clients like IKEA, MTV, Adidas, Bloomberg Business Week and others. Um, yes, what do we do? Well, we're focused with our studio to make different brands and industries stay relevant to the contemporary by transforming and innovating their image. So we're here with you to share a global trend that we spotted. Um, because part of our practice is focusing and studying on upcoming trends. We also initiate trends ourselves, visual trends. And we're also innovating um, visual artistic innovations um, around future desires that we experience that are in the air. Um, that trend that we want to share with you, we entitled it um, true luxury. Before telling about that, we would like to explain you why we chose to work with the term luxury. We have the impression that in Turkey, the notion of luxury is, is important, that the concept of luxury is um, influencing a lot of decision making. So what is true luxury, according to us? In 2015, and also for the upcoming years, we think that true luxury is the possibility to live a purposeful life. True luxury is to choose quality over quantity, resulting in sustainability. True luxury is to invest in a more fair and humane future. So we would like to give you a few examples because we know that you have a lot of power and influence in people's life. You are also responsible for shaping people's environments. Um, true luxury starts with the notion of altruism. I don't know if you're familiar with this term, but altruistic behavior is that you put in the first place the importance, the welfare of the other. So the first example comes from Rome, Italy. Maybe you are familiar with this fountain. It is the Lam Fountain in Rome. Um, the real name is Trevi Fountain. If you don't know its cultural heritage and value, it is as important as, let's say, Eiffel Tower to Paris. If you have been to Rome over the last two years, maybe you have also noticed that the fountain was in renovation. But you may not know is that the person who renovated it, or the brand who renovated it, and the responsible of uh, its new facelift, is Fendi. I don't know if you know what Fendi is, but let's say um, it's a very luxurious. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> it's a very luxurious Italian fashion label who has campaigns looking like this. But then one might ask themselves, why would a company invest in a random fountain in order to give it a facelift? Because this is the CEO of Fendi. Because it is um, by associating yourself with doing something great. You also secure your place next time your, your customer 
tries to hesit hesitate in between a similar brand and yourself, let's say buying a Chanel bag or a Fendi bag, the client goes, okay, I'm not only investing something beautiful, but also investing in the fact that I am contributing to the wellness of my city. So in this way, the company could not only uh, make the city that it associates itself with, it also owned it, own its, own the, owned the people who live there, also all, owned all of us who goes there and like throw another coin just to have love in return, but also uh, contributed in an incredible impact for its um, um, global awareness in the world. But what was also very funny to notice is like, this is the CEO of, um, of Diesel. He's currently, um, they're currently investing in the renovations of Rialto Bridge at the back. Um, and um, Prada is invested in renovating the Spanish ste steps in Rome. And Coliseum is currently being refer um, in renovated by Todd. A second example on why what we believe true luxury means in 2015 comes from recycling innovations. I mean, we're not here to tell you how much we are polluting the world's oceans, we all know that, and the impact of, uh, of, um, of uh, plastic is completely undeniable. But we're here to show you uh, what Adidas did with something as simple as making a shoe on how, we can how they can influence the behavior of, the of, the of their customer. So um, Adidas ran an expedition in the coast of West Africa in cleaning the ocean by the plastic that are as the leftovers of the illegal fish nets. So what they did is that by, oh sorry, is that by cleaning the oceans and recalling this plastic waste, they turned it into a shoe. I mean, it's a pretty smart and easy way of like you pay, I don't know, 100 euro and you feel like you're cleaning the oceans yourself. It's pretty altruistic and pretty selfless way to uh, strengthen your ties as your brand identity and also strengthen the ties with your customer. A third example and a last example before we go on with the innovative examples, part of what we believe as a global trend in true luxury, comes from nature. Uh, according to the World Economic Forum report, in 2050, 2050 um, the world, 70% of the world population will move to the cities. We're here talking about an incredible urbanization. We're talking about all the people who live in the rural areas will rush in the cities. And that means that the more cities are populated with people, the more we will need, be in need for nature. This example comes from Italy again, but this time from Milano. Um, it's an um, architectural creation by um, the Italian architect Stefano Boeri, and the project is called um, Vertical Forest. The reason why it's called Vertical Forest is because the twin residential towers host over 900 trees which, whose height varies from six, three to six meters. And I mean, I don't, needless to explain, how, we know how much uh, trees create, an oxy, as an, uh, create oxygen and is used as like a smog filter. But also with his project, he also proved that trees can also be used as a filter for the outsider noise. And also, needless to say, it also looks very beautiful and gives a countryside effect when you're sitting inside. So throughout these three examples, I believe, here we can conclude that true luxury lies in shifting conventional proportions for the social and planetary welfare. I would love to live in one of these buildings. <laughs> um, yes, we would like to talk about future challenges, and especially for Turkey. We're here in this beautiful country. Um, because we believe that the only way to stay relevant is to create a meaningful change, and especially by the work that you're doing. And as I said before, you, your projects, they, they contain a lot of power to influence people's life in a positive way. Um, so we would like to share a few examples of innovative solutions. And uh, we start with the act of building. Here you see two houses, and they don't look so special. Um, here. But they have something in common. They're actually not built it. They are 
are 3D printed. And this is, happen this is happening in China. The 10 standalone one-story houses look normal at first sight. Uh, well. But the walls are made up of layers of construction waste and cement instead of brick and mortar. However, technological limitations prevented the building's roofs from being printed. The buildings will serve as offices at a high-tech industrial park in Shanghai. Um, China is not the only country investing in these new technologies. This is uh, Amsterdam, my city. They are also busy with, a, busy with a new project with kennel houses, currently rising uh, by the technology of 3D printing. Um, another example of innovative solutions is um, a project about architecture and real estate investment. Uh, it's a project happening in Miami. Um, here you see a satellite image of a, of a parking problem in Miami. This picture is made in, in the early 2000s. Um, this is the, the place that we're talking about. It's a uh, Lincoln Road. Um, this is before uh, the project happened because this area was seen a little bit as, as like the ghetto of Miami and a very brave and innovative uh, real estate investor called Robert Wennett, he made a magical <laughs> parking lot on that place. Um, this project is called 1111 Lincoln Road. Um, besides being a stunning, stunning uh, yeah, design, for, especially for a parking lot, it also contains uh, multiple it, it serves other purposes as well. Um, the architecture, the, the building, this project is done in collaboration with Herzog and de Meuron, the Swiss architect duo. And besides that this project is visually very innovative, also technically, because you see the lightness of the building, like the floors, they really look as if they are like the thickness of my, my, head, my spread at hand. And um, because in Miami there was a problem that the people there with their that own beautiful cars, they didn't want to park it in shabby, dark places. So this is a very light and transparent building. And there's also places where you can uh, relax and there are shopping malls and, uh, sorry, there are shops and there are some uh, restaurants inside. And this project is so aesthetically pleasing that besides hosting <laughs> parked cars, also, luxurious dinners can be hosted on the floors. And the great thing of this project is that it didn't only solve the parking problem of that area, it also improved the whole, the whole uh, quartier. It's now uh, flourishing and uh, a very yeah, popular area to go. Look how <laughs> light and beautiful. <laughs> sorry. I'm um, sorry, yeah. I mean, we, this time we would like to talk about our country, my country, Turkey. And then another innovative solution, this comes from the world of the image, and it involves a work that me and Riola did as uh, image makers. Uh, in the beginning of this year, we partnered with a porcelain tile brand from Turkey called Serenit Porcelain, in order to think with them, in, think with them the future of their practice and innovate a collection a porcelain tile collection, which has never been done before in the world. I mean, you guys, you swim in the sector, you know what porcelain tiles look like, but as image makers who oftentimes deal with fashion clients, it was completely new to us. After research, it was very, pretty shocking for us to realize that the vision of the porcelain sector in the world, not only in Turkey, is pretty much limited with something either very clean cut, chic, slick, which is fine, that you can make airports with, or something very Versace, gilded, Dubai, which is also very understandable, very beautiful, or something very, very much the copy of the nature exactly. People spend trillions of money in copying the nature, but also with an accent on putting an admiration on the Italian marble, especially Carrara. But what was very questioning for us is that, I mean, we realized that as Turkish people will live, we sit on a gold mine. I mean, our, Turkey, our country has so much to offer. The potential of using these beautiful rocks and uh, marbles quarried from our, world, from our c 
country. They're just so beautiful. So uh, through the guideline of ceramic porcelain, we collected 11 stones and marbles, and we decided to enhance them with the tools that are available to us as digital image makers. So we got inspired how technology is, sorry, the nature is depicted in video games. We were inspired in the late, from the latest images that NASA released of Mars. We were inspired by uh, microscopic images, different digital image making techniques, and fossils. So what you have in return as a collection, this is um, um, this stone is called uh, olive pearl. Uh, sorry, how is it called again? Olive pearl. Uh, olive, brown olive, I guess. Oh. It's a Turkish marble. And we what we did know. is that <laughs> yeah, we should know. And then what we did is that we implemented uh, mountain satellite mountain images in order to obtain something that nature can never obtain in itself. We wanted to make nature be jealous of the digital technology. So this is the st a stone called tundra blue we implemented quartz crystals in a marble, in a stone, which is, by nature, is impossible. And if you ever would like to do it, it will be incredibly costly. So through the techniques of digital image making, we could provide luxury in a higher definition. Another example, what we did with the, what is called, yeah, Marmara, the Marmara stone, in Turkish called Helatışı also. <laughs> So what, we, what you will see here, there are examples of the artist impressions of how these interiors and exteriors would look like with the collection that we designed for Serenint. I believe the collection is almost in its um, process of being completed and they will be available to the public in the upcoming months. Hint, hint. <laughs> Sorry? Hinting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just, you know. <laughs> um, yes, we would like to It's talk. called Olive Pearl. Okay. We would like to talk about, um, focus now on manpower and cost efficiency. Um, so from architecture, we're going to fashion, and again with a project that we made with our studio. Um, here you see uh, the latest collection of Paris fashion house, Cochet. This um, collection was launched during the last Paris Fashion Week, and we did all the patterns for, for, this, uh, for this collection. Um, we especially would like to talk with you about this pattern. Um, it looks like an embroidery, but actually it is not, it is an embroidery, but it's an image of embroidery. So we made this embroidery with our computers, with our digital craftsmanship. And this way, the fashion house could print as much of this textile that they desired. Because you can imagine that like a garment that is covered with embroideries is like so, so time costly and also very, very expensive. So what we do here is that, um, like I would say creative experimentation and also experimentation around efficiency and around cost reduction is coming together. And once the garments were made, the, the, the fashion atelier, they added here and there a few sequences and a few, few crystals. So this is like a very extraordinary contemporary pattern that is also a reflection, like an, an artistic reflection of the virtual and the physical merging in our lives. And this is shown in the pattern. And we could also save the company from 85% from their costs. True, <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last example. Um, it involves ecology. Um, and it's a project by a Dutch artist and innovator called Dan Rosegarde. What he did is that he got rid of the street lights in the highways. In the beginning of today, someone was telling about we should invest, as builders, we should invest in ecological material. But hereby, we would like to show you an example that it's no longer the time in, in, in investing in ecological material, but making projects which shift conventional proportions. What he did, this artist, is that he came up with a print, it's a reflective dynamic print, which absorbs the daylight in the morning and reflects it by night. So it creates uh, roads, highways, where you, don't, you no longer need the uh, city lights. And I mean, we will show a sm small video and you will see that it's currently implemented in the Netherlands 
and uh, currently China is the second country who's interested in. Um, okay, like we're still talking about this true luxury and um, one of, an expression of true luxury in cities can be uh, like um, public art works that are very generous. For example, this, this project, um, it's a, an artist made a facade for a demolished building. For some reason this building could not be finished. It might be a political um, or um, a bureaucratic reason. And I see a lot of these buildings, unfortunately, in, in Turkey as well. But imagine that artists are being asked to make artistic interventions with these buildings instead of letting them just be and pollute, pollute our visual spectrum. Um, this is also an example of how uh, an art piece in public space can make the inhabitant of a city dream and experience new adventures in their own town. And it can be as simple as inspiration of an emoticon, like this has already, this can put a big smile on people's faces. So it's nice to see how um, public art, urban art, can really color all the bricks that we are surrounded with. Since this morning, we're, I hear people talking about South Korea. So um, this example comes from South Korea. It's a dynamic print, hydrodynamic print, which gets activated only when it rains. It's a shopping street in Seoul who teamed up with, a, uh, with an artist, visual artist, in order to create a paint which would only be visible when it rains. I mean, it's a pretty smart decision from a salesman perspective because you have this 10,000 million people who rather stay in their house in the warmth when it rains, but there's an art piece outside which only gets visible in the very moment you don't want to go out. So it can be inspirational. And then this is the last example we would like to give before we conclude. It's just a very nice, I mean, it, the image speaks for itself. It just puts a big smile on my face because I come from a city, Istanbul, which is filled with buses, which are so-called polluting the air, but it's also nice to completely create an oxymoron where you clean the air on top, but also a little bit slightly pollute at the back. But yeah, hereby we would like to conclude our talk by saying that, like we were talking about it in the plane yesterday morning, like Turkey really has, the, has this reputation of being incredibly witty and innovative and creative in the moments where the creativity is the least expected. And we both believe that by shifting slightly our understanding of what true luxury means, and by sitting and taking a deep breath and asking ourselves the question, what do we stand for? That we believe that we can, you can, as builders of tomorrow, can create a change. As, as Pinar and Viola, we would be happy to take part in it with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>